All right. Everybody having a good weekend so far? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yep. Well, hopefully, I know it's coming to the end of the weekend, and uh, sometimes talking about EIULs, people get glazed over, and we're going we're to try to keep this, uh, you know, we're not going to talk about the product details that you can learn by calling the sales department at some of these insurance companies. We're not going to go over spreadsheets because that's not why people buy, okay? What we're going to go over today is the things that will help you sell in the home, okay? You can learn about all the product details uh, somewhere else, okay? Um, and before I introduce the main person for today, I want to share my experience um, as I was introduced to EIOs because I think a lot of times we come into this business and there's so much to learn and EIOs can seem really complicated. And I mean, has anybody been intimidated if you've never done an EIUL, intimidated by an EIUL because you hear it's complicated? Because it's really not complicated. Uh, you know, a whole life product. Okay. But it can be used really, really well for a mortgage protection product. And I was a little bit intimidated, but what I did with some of my clients, just to give you an example, is we learned how to do this. We learned how to uncover money, which we're going to teach you today. Your policies can go from an average of 1,000 or 1,100 APV to 2,500 or 3,000 APV. And you might actually uncover a few whales. I had some clients uh, what, a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And uh, normally, it was, I think they were 67 and 69 years old. They're going to be a case study that Mike talks about. But this client would probably have qualified for maybe Gerber. Okay, his wife was in really good health, but he would have qualified for Gerber. It might have paid me $120 a month for uh, a year. So not that great of a sale. I bring Mike in because he's got the experience I didn't have. After walking away from that client, we made $56,000 in commissions on one client. Another client, not not a not a wealthy home. I mean, 42 year old male, 38 year old wife, four kids. Wife stays at home. They don't make a ton of money. Within less than an hour, one sit close made seventeen thousand dollars in commissions on one sale. Okay, so there's ways to make a lot of money in a short period of time if you understand some of these products. Okay. Uh, what you don't want to do is complicate it, and you don't want to write these products on, on clients that won't qualify for it. I've had agents who get really excited about EIULs. I've had one agent that went out and wrote $44,000 in premium in one month, and she got $4,000 issued. Okay, and she's no longer here. <laughs> okay, it's because she got so excited about this product that she's offering it to everybody, people that are 70 years old and on you know, all these medications, they're not gonna qualify for it. So this product is very specific. It's, it's made to solve specific needs. Okay, and Mike is gonna talk about that. The reason I, I don't wanna be the one to go over all these details is because, um, you know, last year, top three EIUL producers in the company, number one was Mike Colburn, number two was Aaron Hollow, number three was me, and Aaron Hollow, now here's why I say that, because Mike Colburn was number one his rookie writer of the year, he wrote $420,000 in his first year in 2015. Not only can he do it, but he taught Aaron Hollow and he taught me. <laughs> okay, number two, number three. So not only can he do it, but it's also duplicatable. So if you follow the way he does it, he keeps it very simple, but there's not a person in the company that I know that would be better to teach this than Mike Colburn. So put your hands together for Mike. to be here. You guys ready to learn how to sell bigger cases? Yes. yes. All right. So I'm going to do the boring stuff first, okay? I'm a numbers guy. I'm just going to go through some boring stuff at the beginning so that you guys will, about the time you fall asleep, it'll get exciting, okay? So just real quick, what is an EIUL? Does anyone uh, want to gander a guess at what an EIUL is? Real quick. Equity Index Universal Life, okay? Please don't use this language with a client. <laughs> don't do it, okay? It doesn't work. You guys, just what is it, okay? It's a permanent life insurance policy that grows cash value. Um, obviously, the cash value grows based on an indice, an index, okay? Uh, different than a whole life. Um, whole life has some guarantees that an EIUL and some policies. So just basic uh, basic situation there. A couple of case studies were already mentioned. 
Um, I'll give you four examples where we found some money, and then I'm going to teach you how to do it, okay? Number one example uh, was a, a Walmart executive, okay? Not making a ton of money, okay? But household income at right at $180,000, $200,000, okay? House mortgage protection, I believe the home was a uh, $220,000 mortgage, something of that nature. So I'm not talking about a million-plus home, okay? Just closed on that uh, two months ago. That was $25,000 target premium. It's a good commission, okay? It's not what you do, but it's a good commission. It came from restricted stock, okay? So just to give you an example. I'm going to go through what it is exactly. Another example, Cynthia and Scott, uh, you mentioned this one, four kids. Um, that one, you know, Brad actually wrote that one, four kids. All deal with college funding, okay? Another example. Uh, another one was just a simple rollover from, from an IRA that the client was already funding 15% more into her 401k. Didn't have to find the money as far as the additional savings. We're just moving 15% of her already spent money into an EIUL, okay? Gotta show them value in order to do it, okay? These are just simple examples. Um, another one, Matt and Alicia Clark was a client. Um, they're young, just about ready to have a kid, and they wanted to pay their home off early. You guys ever run into those? Want to pay their home off early? They're funneling three, four hundred dollars a month extra. Guys, you can have them do that through permanent insurance and still get them permanent life insurance. They pay it off in 20 years, but now they're making it tax-free earnings long term rather than just the home's paid off. Okay? Those are some examples. Um, <clears throat> one thing I want to say is you guys have to keep this very simple, okay? I said this in another class that we were talking about today. Emotions buy what pays for it. A couple of people were in that class. Logic pays for it. You guys have to keep this simple. I've gotten really good, I'm a mathematician. I've gotten really good at faking them out. They don't know I'm a mathematician, <laughs> okay? I'm just really good at explaining complex situations to people in a very layman's term, okay? One of the things we're gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through exactly, role playing, exactly how I go through my presentation every single meeting. It does not change if I meet a, oh, this lead's got a million dollar home, now I gotta present different. Every single meeting, why is that important? Because it becomes replicatable. I can teach a guy or girl that's brand new how to present a 20 minute presentation, follow X, Y, and Z, okay? Um, all right, so <clears throat> let's get into, um, I'd like to go straight into that, is that, is that fair? Um, I want to have, sorry Kevin, I was going to, okay. Uh, Barry, are you comfortable with coming out front? Sure. Okay, so coming out front, what? well, Barry, everyone give Barry a hand. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do some, some real role playing. Now Barry, have we planned this at all as far as like, have you ever done this, this interaction with me before? No, I've not. Have you ever seen me present before? No, in I've the not. home, ever? Okay, so this is, guys, I want you to know this is authentic, okay? I'm gonna show you exactly how I present. And hopefully you guys will take away from this that it's not rocket science. All right, so as, as of right now, I've already gotten in the home. Um, I'm sitting at the kitchen table. I've already done my, you know, hoorah at the beginning, the five minutes that you guys want to talk through, okay? Um, are you married, Barry? No. Who's your pretend spouse? <laughs> Lisa. Barry and Lisa, all right. All right, um, you've got two kids, okay? Okay. You don't really, but 
you've got two kids, right. okay? Um, you're making, you know, you, you can make some of this stuff up. Making good income, you guys are saving money, just kind of roll with me on this, okay? okay. All right, so Barry, um, I just want, before we get started, before we get into this, I just want to explain a little bit about what my role is, what I'm here to achieve. Um, honestly, Barry, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be transparent with you, okay? <clears throat> I'm probably the worst salesman you're gonna ever meet, okay? And here's the reason why. I don't like sitting down with individuals and selling them at all, okay? Um, I used to be a teacher, and as a teacher, I get a lot of excitement out of just educating my clients. Because I feel like the more you know, the better educated you'll be, and the better educated you'll be, the better decisions you'll make. Because of that, I'm probably gonna ask a lot of questions um, and, and just kind of work with me if, if, if you feel a little uncomfortable with them. It's probably the, the better questions, the better answers I get, the more I can help you, okay? So I run a financial planning firm. A little, little background on myself. I run a financial planning firm. And, um, you know, we do a lot of different stuff. We work with a lot of different clients. And what we find is the number one question that comes up deals with their biggest asset. What do you think their biggest asset is, Barry? Their home. Exactly right. And in fact, that's, that's why a lot of people fill out the form. This is where I take the form, okay? Um, <laughs> this is why I'm here. You guys filled out the form. Um, you, you guys had a concern about that. Tell me a little bit of why, why did you fill that form out, Barry? Well, mainly, I just wanted to make sure that since I am the primary provider of the household, that. Lisa, the kids would still have a home to come back to. Okay. I don't want them to lose it back to the bank and leave them destitute. Why, why is that valuable to you? Why does that mean something to you? Well, Lisa and the kids are my world. They're the people that I care about the most. I don't want to make, I want to make sure that if anything happens to me that they still have a stable environment. So. So if I'm hearing if I'm hearing you right, the most important thing that we can accomplish today is making sure that if something happens tomorrow, the home's taken care of for, for Lisa. Is that, is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I want to make sure that we take care of that before before I get finished today. Is that fair? Okay. Okay. So inevitably, as I go through some of this stuff, um, again, my process here is just to educate you on the different strategies that people use. There's three or four different strategies. I want to explain what those are, okay? Um, we probably will get to a point in this where uh, it might make sense to take applications and move forward with the process. Um, if it's the case, if, if that's the situation, if there's a right way and a wrong way to apply, mm -hmm. I'll walk you through the right way so it's comfortable and it makes sense for you. Um, and again, I've been doing this long enough to know that inevitably sometimes people get to that part of of the, the discussion, and I'll hear things like, hey, Mike, I want to think about it. I want to pray about it. I want to sit down. I want to talk to mom and dad about it. I hear those types of responses. And what it really means isn't that they want to think about it. It's because the price doesn't fit in the budget, and so they got to think about it a little bit more. So when we get to that point, can you just be kind of transparent with me and work with me on, you know, does it not fit in the budget or does it not? Is that, is that fair? Sure. Okay. All right. So here's what I want to do. I just want to go through the different strategies that a lot of our clients solve the problem, the mortgage protection problem with, okay? So the first strategy that clients, a lot of clients will use is death benefit. And I'm writing this on a blank sheet of paper. Okay. So, very death benefit. This is this is a little bit like um, life insurance. Okay. Do you guys own any life insurance? I don't. You don't. Okay. Are you familiar with? Have you heard of term insurance before? I have. You have. Okay. So this is a lot like term insurance. Okay. Um, term insurance, <laughs> and I'm going to be very very candid with you on this. Term insurance is a lot like betting against an insurance company, okay? Um, the, the ranges of years can be 10 years to 30 years that you can protect a policy. And really the point of this is if you die inside of that range, 
then the bank is going to pay off the full mortgage or a portion of the mortgage. This is like the, this is the cheapest way that clients can take care of it. But it's cheap in that it's also the most costly way. And when I say costly, here's what I mean. There's only two ways that you get benefit out of this. You either have to die. That's, that's costly, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you outlive it and you live one day longer than this term. And guess what? You lose the game. Because the insurance company keeps all the premium and you don't have coverage. Okay. Now, this isn't a bad type of coverage, but most of our clients that use this, this is more like a bill or an expense. Okay. Now, I own some of this. Okay. I've got a wife and home. I'm 35. I've got two kids. If daddy's not here, if I get hit going home, I know because I've got some of this, my family will be taken care of. So I want you to think this is a bad coverage. It's just one way. It's kind of like... Um, Kind of like you're a mechanic and there's multiple tools in your in your kind of tool shop, and this is just one of the tools that a lot of clients will use. Okay, do you have any questions about that? No, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so the second strategy that a lot of our clients will use is living benefits. Now, with living benefits, the focus is a little different. These are the things that um, are, aren't going to necessarily kill you, but they're going to knock you off your rocker, okay? Things like heart attack, stroke, cancer, have you, have you ever known anyone that has had cancer or stroke heart attack? Unfortunately, yes. And you have? Who was it? Uh, uncle had it, cousin. Cousin had it. Uh, I've actually had a couple, three, uh, three uncles have had it. Four uncles have had it. Okay. So what what was the what was the financial picture like when they were going through that? Well, they were the primary providers of the household. I remember as a teenager, my favorite uncle had cancer, and um, his wife basically had to pick up the load because they had three children that they were supporting. So she. She had to work full time and you know they made it, but it was a struggle. It was a struggle. Do you think it would have been helpful if they had something that would have taken care of that financial burden during that situation? Absolutely. So I've got a really good friend, he's actually a business partner of mine, who had this situation happen to his father. Um, I won't go into the deep details, but basically, you know, doctor, um, you know, worked on works on people all day long and was planning on traveling uh, going with with um, Brad to I think it was Ireland right and on the way to Ireland they were getting ready to board to actually board the, the plane um, he had multiple issues it was heart related it was I mean the guy had in a three or four day period he had I think three heart attacks or thereabouts um, and the unfortunate part is that if they would have had something like this, he had to go back to work, even though he wasn't ready to go back to work after they had solved the problem. But he had to go back because he had to generate income. If he would have had this type of coverage, the home would have been taken care of and he wouldn't have had to worry about it. Okay? So again, this could be uh, something that would be beneficial for you. It's tied to uh, still a period of time oftentimes but the, the solution here is focused on living benefits. Any questions on that? No. Now I'm going to stop here for a second. Have I talked anything about EIULs yet? No. no. Okay. Do you get a feeling of me teaching? No. Does it feel like I'm selling something? No. Okay, so if you guys aren't feeling that, your client's not going to feel that. Okay? So I just want to make that very clear that it's an educational process, okay? All right, <clears throat> so there is, there, Barry, there is a side strategy that some clients will use. It's kind of a unique strategy. Um, it's actually called, called ROP, or return of premium, okay? 
There's no gimmicks on this, okay? It's exactly what it, what it says. You fund it for 20 years, you haven't passed away, you get your money back. It's pretty straightforward, okay? You can do it for 20, 25, 30 years. Some, again, we work with 60 plus carriers, so some of these carriers are structured just a little bit different, but the whole idea is uh, this was marketed to people who um, kind of are okay with saving their money, but they're not interested in growing their money. So it's kind of like money in a savings account. In 20 years, you're gonna have it, but you're not gonna have any more than what you put in it. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. And here's a unique strategy that some clients will use. They'll do a 20-year return of premium on a 30-year mortgage. After 20 years, they get their money back. They take that, that money that's been put in, now that they don't need mortgage protection anymore because they're gonna take that money and they're gonna pay down or pay off the 30-year mortgage, okay? So again, could be useful. Um, I don't know if it's exactly the right fit for you guys. We have to explore that a little bit more. Um, but could be a, a good solution. Any questions about that, about the return premium? No, I, I understand that. Okay, okay. All right, now the last strategy, the last main strategy is actually called growth benefit. The growth benefit, um, the easiest way to explain this, um, did you guys, have you guys ever rented a house or an apartment in your life? Uh, yeah, before I bought the house. Okay, why, why did you rent? Well, at the time, renting was cheaper than getting my own mortgage, but as the home values have gone up, then it's about the same or even lower to, to buy a house now. So, um, by the way, congrats on getting a home. I mean, we wouldn't be here unless you purchased, right? Um, why, why did you make the transition from renting a house that, you know, we've been there, we've rented before. Um, why did you make the transition from renting to owning? Well, by, by owning, at least I'm buying equity. Okay. So it's a place that I could call home. It's a place that will build and grow equity, so if I ever sell it down the line, I can make more than I spent, whereas rent, once that month is over with, that money's gone. That, that's almost the exact answer I hear from a, from a lot of our clients. Um, here's the irony of owning a home, though. It costs more to own a home because you gotta pay the taxes, you gotta keep up the property. If the roof breaks, right, you gotta put 10,000 into a new roof, so it can cost more, but is it more expensive? I would say no, okay. because of the equity. Exactly, it's the number one reason why people buy homes. They wanna own it, and they wanna have equity in the, in the home, right? So this is very similar to why you guys made the same decision of buying a home, okay? This, they do this because of ownership, okay? Now, there's a couple parts of this strategy, okay? It's still gonna have the death benefit. A lot of these plot policies or strategies, they're, they're gonna have the living benefits, okay? So these, you get this with it. But there's a couple of other reasons why someone would buy this. Uh, they, they get equity in the contract. Just like you guys over time, as you pay the principal down on your home, over time, you get equity in this contract as well, okay? Um, there's only two things that I'm certain of in life, and, and let me know if you've solved the, either of these two problems. Yeah. Um, death and taxes, okay? I have yet to meet anyone that's evaded either of them effectively. The ones that evade taxes are in jail, so I don't, don't plan on that. Um, but it's death and taxes, so this has a, it's, it's got a permanent death benefit, okay? It's there forever. So. You pass away prematurely, it's going to take care of you. But after you pay off the mortgage, and let's say you live a ripe old age of like my grandmother, my grandmother's 101 and still ticking. Okay? Now, she doesn't have anything in place. So there is nothing there when inevitably she's going to pass away. But it's a permanent death benefit, and the, the equity in this contract 
And I don't know how much you guys know about taxes, but ta it grows tax deferred. And if you if you access it correctly, the way we advise you to access it, it's going to actually grow and you're going to access it tax free. Now, I'm going to stop because this can get me in trouble with compliance and it can get you guys in trouble with compliance. Do not tell your clients that it grows tax free. Did you notice what I said? It grows tax deferred. If you access it correctly, it can be tax free. It is very important that you guys talk correctly about this stuff, okay? Otherwise, I've heard of lawsuits, you'll lose, okay? So just take it, take it very, 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 it's very important, okay? All right, so it grows tax free. Uh, tax deferred, if you access it correctly, it's tax free. Um, you know, all these plans, they still have the living benefits, they still have the death benefit. Um, Barry, are you guys saving money anywhere right now? Uh, I've got my 401ks that I'm trying to put money into. Okay. Um, are those like just your current 401k? Did you roll money over into your 401k from previous jobs? A little bit of both. A little, little both, okay. So 401k from other jobs, and then the current job I have, I'm doing a 401k. Okay, how much is the match right now for your 401k? Uh, it's 50% of what I do. 50%? Okay, how much do you do right now? What, what's, how much? I'm putting in about 6%. 6%. So you're putting in 6 and they match 3? Yeah, 3%. So you're only putting in enough to get the match? Correct. Is that correct? Okay, okay. Congrats, that's good. That's very smart of you. Um, okay, are you guys saving any money, any other money? Is there any, you guys have any like restricted stock, Roth IRA money you're saving? Do you guys work with a financial advisor already? Any, any of that? No. Okay. Kids, are you saving for your kids at all? Trying. Where are you putting it? Uh, in the uh, checking accounts. Okay. <laughs> So checking for kids. Okay, how much are you putting there? Uh, about two hundred a month. About two hundred. Okay. Okay. And what is it your mark for specifically? Like you say kid college funds. How old are you kids again? Uh, four and six. Four and six. Man, you're a handful. <laughs> I only know because I've gone through it. I've got twin girls that are seven, so we've been through those years. <laughs> um, so two hundred dollars. Uh, hundred dollars each for each kid is that what you're currently doing yes okay okay all right um, okay so at this point I've got this all on my sheet of paper okay and I the last thing I write before I turn it around and hand it to him okay Barry usually when we get to this point okay uh, any questions I mean do you have any questions about this at the moment no keep going okay Clear as mud? So far. Okay. <laughs> you guys laughed, didn't you? That's what I say. Yeah, I got to get them laughing. Um, okay, so really, it really boils. If you guys are like my family, we live on a budget. We've got a certain amount coming in, a certain amount going out, right? Okay. So usually, the decision is made because of cash flow, right? Um, I'm assuming whatever we do today has to fit into what makes sense from a budget standpoint, right? Of course. Okay. You guys are gonna know more of, that, of the, what that number is than I am. I don't know what that number is. I don't have any idea. But can you give me just kind of a, a piece of cake number? You know, everyone's got a piece of cake number that you can save, or if it makes sense that you can put towards something like this. Is there a piece of cake number that you could put towards something? And then I want you to think about as, as a couple, is there a stretch number that you'd probably have to have a like a family get together and really talk about it. It had to be really important to you. What, what would those two numbers be for you guys? Let's see, 200. Okay. And stretch and 300. Okay. 200 and 300. Okay. Um, so tell, tell me, um, are there any of these strategies, just cross them out, and this is where I hand it over to them. Is there any of these strategies that you don't like at all? Just not fond of them. I can't say there is. So any of them that you like better than others? No, 
no force to death benefit. Okay. That's important. Mm -hmm. Equity. Okay. It's always nice. Okay. And all of them are nice, but those, this, well, this is the most important one. Okay. Okay. So here's, can, can I give you some, some advice? Please. Is, is that okay? Okay. So you guys don't have any life insurance at all right now, is what, is what I heard. Okay. So it sounds like we need to keep it inside of a budget of about $200. Um, what I heard you say is the life of the, the death benefit would be important, but it also would be important that we're not just throwing the money away, right? Mm -hmm. See, when, when we advise people on the right solution, I always want to make sure that every dollar that you guys are putting towards something has a purpose. There's a reason why you're putting it towards something, okay? Um, so it sounds like, and we can look at some of the numbers, but it sounds like this is going to be the best option for you because you're gonna get the death benefit, you're gonna also get the equity, you're gonna get that growth, and here's the really cool part, okay? You guys told me that you guys were always already spending 200 into your kids. Mm -hmm. We can actually use this to pretty much supercharge what you're doing already. <sighs> okay, really? Yeah, I mean, you're making 0% right now, putting it into a savings account. We can probably, for your kid, I mean, those, those contracts are probably making three to five percent return. So I mean, we're not changing anything. We can get you better return though, with no with no losses. So you're telling me that instead of putting the money in the college fund, that we can invest that money instead into a. What, did you say college fund, or are you put it in checking? Well, it's in checking, but it's designed for okay. college for the kids. Okay. So so the yeah the accounts that we use for this really takes care of both of those. And let me tell you why. See, I do this on my kids, what, I, what I'm about to tell you. Okay. And the reason is because if, if my wife and I save money, 20, 30, $40,000 for our kids, and let's say they get a full scholarship, if I'm putting it into a college, like a 529 plan, a college plan, and they choose not to go to college or they get a full scholarship, guess what? They, that, that can't be used for anything else. I mean, it can, but I have to pay taxes on it. Okay, so we've just we've just learned that there are better places to put some of this money that gives you more options. And a lot of our clients just want more options. So instead of it being forced to college, it could be you could use it for for wedding. You know, you could use it for first car. You could use it for a down payment for a house. You can use it for college. So there's other things. I think you'd be probably happier getting a better return. Is that fair? Anything's better than zero percent. Okay. Tell me more. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna stop there. Okay. You see the questions he's getting? Like, oh, okay. Well, tell me more about it. Okay. Now, I probably at this point would walk out with about three or four hundred dollars a month for policies. You you see where they're coming from? Guys, is this complicated? Have I said anything about equity index universal life? And this yeah. is how it works, and here's the chart, and look at how much money you're gonna, have I said anything about that? No, stop doing it, okay? It's not effective. Now, you are going, and I'll give you a little trick, you're going to get into a meeting where the wife and the husband are complete opposites, okay? My wife and I are complete opposites the way we put knowledge together, okay? <laughs> Neither is better, okay? But, I'm gonna give you a special question that I want you guys to infuse every single time into a presentation. And you'll know when the right time is, okay? You might wanna do this at the very beginning, you might do it in the middle, and it's gonna happen right before you're talking, potentially talking about something very complicated, <coughs> okay? Here's the question you ask. Barry, Lisa, imaginary Lisa. Um, are you guys the type of people that uh, you wanna know how the watch works, or do you just want me to tell you what time it is? I don't know what time it is. What was that? Just tell me what time it is. I am never going to talk about numbers. He just told me 
don't tell me the details. What y'all are doing is you're going into these meetings and all they want to know is tell me what to do. You're the expert. Tell me what to do. And y'all are going in there saying, well, it's 5% growth and like it does this and that and, and like look at the living benefits and look at all this. Stop. Okay? You can't sell people the way you need to be sold. I learned this the hard way, guys. I'm analytical. I went in and sold people the way I buy. Mm -hmm. But I learned that I was doing the analytics side because of me. And I wasn't respecting what the client needed. Now, if Lisa responds and says, oh, I need to know. I need to know how the watch works. Now I've got two people, okay? I've got two different ways. And what I have to do is be respectful. And so here's how I'm going to follow it up. Barry, um, I'm probably going to get to a point where I'm going to have to go and talk a little bit about details. And your eyes are probably going to glaze over, okay? Um, I'm going to keep it as high level as I can. Lisa, when the time comes and you need to know more details, just stop me and ask. Is that fair? Now I can gauge the entire presentation based on what they want. It's not about me, okay? This is it, guys. This is it. This is money right here. Y'all thought you were going to come in here and you're going to learn all these like crazy little techniques about the inner workings of EIULs. <laughs> Call the carrier. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know them, okay? But call the carrier, okay? And be careful not to regurgitate that stuff to the client unless you get, tell me how the watch works, okay? Now, we've only got a few minutes left. Um, 10 minutes? Okay. I want to, thank you, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Expect to see big numbers from Barry now. He's going to do like 40,000 in a week. Guys, I've done over a hundred thousand in a week. Oh, wow. Okay. So it can be done. Okay. I want to. I want to answer some questions. And I know we don't have time for a ton, but I. I want to. Did you have something to say, real quick? Well, maybe go over just briefly the different ways you can find the money. Different places to do it. But we have found college funding. Okay. So, so let me do that real quick, and then we'll answer questions. So. Probably the top three ways when I think back on all of the clients and where money is positioned and why, it came from three different categories. Number one, the easiest way, is excess 401k money. Anytime, if you're not asking this question, okay, anytime you see extra, it happens all the time to people that are in their early 50s, all the time. The reason why they're putting it in there is because they get a catch up at 51. Okay? And so you get people doing 15%. Why are you doing you ask them, why are you doing why are you doing more more than the match? And I, and I love this is one question I love to you gotta do it straight face. Um, when when they respond, I'll say, well, why why are you putting more than just the match? <laughs> Quiet. Don't respond. And a lot of times they'll just say, I don't know. And my follow-up is, hmm, um, a lot of our smart clients aren't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to be smart, okay? Or a lot of our wise clients, okay? So not being rude, not trying to bash them for what they do. They just don't know any better, okay? So extra 401k, 403b. You guys don't know the difference between the two. It's just one's private, one's public. It's just it, it's really the same thing. Um, the second place that I usually find the money is going to be in other places they're already saving money. Okay, I'm saving five hundred dollars a month into my savings account. I'm saving a uh, thousand. You'd be surprised. I'm saving a thousand dollars a month into a, just a stock account. Um, why are you do always ask why? What is the purpose of the money? Why are you, why are you doing it? <coughs> why is that important to you? 
Okay, do you want to get to that? It's again, emotion buys logic. Pays. Pays for it. Okay. The third way, and this gets you got to get quick on your hands for this, but the third way is the uh, spend down, spending down on their debt. And if you guys don't know how to use a financial calculator, like a real financial calculator, time value of money, go like YouTube how to use it, okay? Um, you need to get very good with amortization tables and knowing what the actual interest that they're gonna save. Because I promise you, for a 30-year mortgage, I promise you, read the information on it, it is not better for them to do pay it off in 20 years through just paying it into the home. I tell clients, the reason why it's not better is because your money, as you put it into the home, you're putting it in jail. There's absolutely no way for you to access it. You lose your job. There's zero ability for you to get that equity. You have to have an income because you're getting it lended to you from the bank. So it's always better, always, to put it into something that doesn't put it in jail, and you can take it out in 20 years and pay down the debt if you want to. And when you run the numbers, it's always better as long as they're healthy. Again, there's some factors there. As long as they're healthy, reasonable age. Okay, so those are really the three areas. You know, college, there's some college funding in there. Um, but really, if you look for those three areas and just plug in these strategies, you guys can double and triple the premium. As well as, the, as well as the actual app count. All right, I want to do questions. I had one in the back first, gentleman in the back. No, you said there was, there was a lockout with four policies. Yep, yeah, yeah. yep. Uh, I saw the one on the IUL. Was it four IULs on four individuals? Um, more than one, it just, again, it depends on how the numbers work, but it could be two term policies. It could be two EIULs and then another two for the kids. Okay. It just depends on, again, it's, it's got to fit into, here's the budget. Right. So I'd have, and I, I do this very quickly, I'd have to look at what is the cost to get $200,000 of coverage. You know, is 200 going to only fit with like a 20 year term? And if it does, then I, I, I do that with this. Right. I'm never going to show them 300 because that's their sticker shot. Right. Okay. And then I might do the two IULs with this. It just depends on how the budget fits in. Okay. There was, I saw a lay here. Yeah. Most, right now, most of the EIUL carriers are gonna be National Life Group, most of them, yeah. How long do, um, should people leave their money in to, uh, before they take it out? It has to build up the, right, the balance thing, right? Yeah, that, it, before you that, can borrow that can it. be, um, that's a really involved I know. question. I know, um, The short answer is, it depends. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. If someone's, um, like, like because here's the reality, if you look at it, it actually can be more beneficial for them to actually borrow from them and pay off other stuff early. Because the way the, the, way the cash value grows is, yeah, you know, I don't want to get complicated, but when you're borrowing money out of these cash value policies, you're actually earning money on the borrowed money. And so it can supercharge certain things to borrow money out, earn money on the borrowed money, mm -hmm. and fund it into a, another debt. So I don't have a real answer to that. If, I mean, this this client of mine uh, wants to do one of it. He he said, "What if I'm unemployed? Can I take that money back out?" And I yeah. said, "Well, probably not right away." Let's talk after. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Couple couple others. Oh, you said uh, you want all the time or all the clock work. So how do you just do very simply explain the I will for somebody that just wants all the time? The time? Yes. Literally, I'm gonna say, well, they don't they don't want to know how it works, so. You want death benefit, you want equity, I think you guys need to do 120 into Barry and about $80 into Lisa, and that, that fits your budget. You're gonna have equity, you're gonna have the death benefit, the living benefit, you're gonna have everything you need. Do you want the retirement income? No need to, they don't want it. They don't need to know. Yep. So are you not getting into illustrations at all? Absolutely not, unless they ask for it. Really? So when you get into it's price, weird, guys. It's weird, but so it works. You're, so you're not breaking down the death benefit for them? Oh my God. Guys, <laughs> only, guys, listen. Only if they ask. Okay? I'm not trying to prevent them.
from seeing something that's scary and that's gonna that's not the purpose here. But now if someone says I want to know how the watch works. Well, I'm going straight to National Life Group on my iPad. I'll put it in, and I'll have the illustration right there. It's okay. done, okay? okay? And I'll show you. Like, here it is. But if someone says, like, I don't, I don't need to know. I mean, I'm going to earn about 5%, and, and I got ha like, I don't need to know, okay? okay hold on. One, I've got a question. Kevin in the back. Good, good question, okay? Double-sided double answer is no, you're not stuck into the payment, okay? I'll need to explain, explain how that works a little bit, but what we don't want to do is take money for this purpose that's short-term money. Like, I don't want you taking money from your, from your emergency fund account to fund this, because this is not short-term money, this is mid-term money. So in three, four, five years, you can have access to it, but and it's not that you can't access it, but you again, you don't want to or be forced to access it any earlier than you have to, okay? Barry. Is there a target age for this product? Um, not really. Um, you have to be a little more careful, okay? You have to be a little more careful as they get over 60. Um, and if you wanna know the reason why, it's based on age, cash value growth, you don't want these policies blowing up, structure them again that's why you call national life group call them they'll structure them to where they're going to be great okay but not really it's the the right demographic is the one that wants permanent death benefit living benefits cash value equity i mean if they want that and they're 70 they can get it okay um i've got a bunch more is this the flex life 2 product from national life group is that could be Secure Provider Plus, Flex Life 2. I mean, yeah, it could be. I, I'm only familiar with the Flex Life 2 products, so I'm not quite sure really what even. Yeah, I understand almost everything what you just said, but I don't want to go to. Okay, we'll talk after. All right. Okay. Last one in the back. I don't want to go too deep, but I know it's a 10 year surrender. You mentioned the term, or it's access to five years, et cetera. Is that going? Yeah, there's not a 10 year surrender that it does break even after about 10 to 13 years, but that has no relevance to whether or not they can access it or not. They can, they can access anything that's in the contract, they can access at any time. Even if it might be a thousand dollars, it might be thirty thousand dollars, they can access it. No, there's no fee except for the loan cost. What, which one is that? Because I okay. talked to them. I need to, I need to be done. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Come up to the front if you have more questions. Thank you.